Awesome work, my dude. Oh, yeah. Safe. Yeah, I got one. He thought he was going to be able to beat me on the ground. And I, called, I told Matty C that I was coming here to take no L's. And if you got a problem with that, 1-800, call my bluff, baby. Ooh. You heard it here. On this team, we fight for that itch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that itch. Coming in at 320 kilobytes per second, it's time for Maddie C's Sports for you and me. All right, everybody, Maddie C Sports for you and me. Uh, we're here with my good friend, Iggy, Iggy Dahlia Medina, and the boss, Mike Paul Veer of Cage Titans. Uh, how are you guys doing today? We're great. Yeah, about a week out from fight week, as good as we can be. Awesome. So, uh, Mike, you have 42 fights on the card, or... Uh, we actually have 40, 41 now, uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it's a pretty big fight card here for you guys. You know, we've been used to, you know, doing ten and twelve fights, and uh, we're up to nineteen on this card. Or I think actually eighteen. Um, but yeah, man, everybody wanted to sign up and get one last fight in before the end of the summer. And um, you know, who am I to tell people no? So every if you put your name in with Cage Shines, I do my best to get you on the card. And uh, you know, there's not many other promotions going on right now in mass, especially for amateurs. And um, my feelings are during COVID, really only the pros were really training. There wasn't new members and new blood coming into the gyms because they were basically shut down. So the first, you know, for the last year since we've come back, you know, our focus was getting the experienced pros and the experienced amateurs back in the cage competing. Um, now guys who just started training at a gym a year ago, once COVID opened back everything back up, these guys are now ready for their first fight. So um, that's why you see an influx. I think we have 13, 15 amateur fights or 14 amateur fights, four pros, uh, two of those amateur fights are title fights. So uh, yeah, man, it's, it's just, uh, this is the new wave of fighters now. And I, I think that's what, what kind of what we're seeing here on this card. And like you said, a lot of Amies and stuff. It, how, how many uh, debuts you have on the card? going on uh let me see great question one two three four five six seven eight eight first time amateurs one two three four five five guys that are just this is their second fight ever so uh yeah man it, it's a lot of fresh new blood I use the phrase a lot, refilling the lot, uh, you know, backfilling the lot. You know, we had a lot of guys that moved on, Billy Goff, Connor Matthews. Um, now what's those next wave of fighters that are coming in, those next round of amateurs? Um, earlier in the year, you were seeing us do eight, nine pro fights and two or three amateurs. Now the reverse happens. Um, and and, and I, I really think that's what happened is that, you know, we just said nine, I think nine amateur debuts. These are all guys that just started training back a year ago. Um, getting back into the gym so now they're on their year anniversary and they're ready to itch and get a fight so uh you know that's what we're going to kind of do here and this this is a, a pretty amateur heavy card for us uh, but it's what we're all about it doesn't matter whether you're a first-time fighter first-time amateur ufc hopeful or just a guy that's trying to fight for his bucket list whatever your you know your goal is in this sport we have a spot for you um and, and I'm, I'm happy to have this card Iggy. I'm looking forward to this fight night. 
<laughs> because we say it every time. Like, who's that new superstar that's going to emerge tonight? Uh, you know, on on that fight card, who's that guy that no one knows and just puts on an amazing performance? Like, you know, last year, Dan Walsh, Jake Caskey, mm-hmm. that were nobodies. They they had no fights, and then boom, they're on the scene, and everybody knows their name. Julian Connerton, um, things like that. Those are guys that within the last year made their debuts and made huge splashes. The prom kid, like. Um, all those guys that were brand new <laughs> mm-hmm. last year, and now here's that next crop. This is like our next freshman class coming in, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. And you got two good Amy uh, title fights. You got uh, Jadafor and David Burke, and you have Arthur and Tyler Smythe, which is going to be a real good amateur fight. Um, talking to them both, they uh, – they're really pumped for this fight, and um, they're very quiet. But I finally got Arthur Mupofu to talk more than two sentences. So, like, I'm, I'm very accomplished with that. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that, that that's going to be a, a banger of a fight, and it's just a testament to both of those fighters. You know, they're they're using the amateur ranks for what they're meant to be. You know, test yourself. You know, test your uh, metal as a fighter and, and see what you really got before you go pro. And – you know, they're taking the toughest test they can get. Off the last show, went up to 45, trying to secure, you know, champ, champ, double champ status. Um, you know, he came up a little short in that decision, but here he is back down to 35 defending his belt. And guess what Tyler Smythe's trying to do? He just won the uh, flyweight title. He's now going up in weight to try to become champ, champ. Um, you know, so, you know, Tyler's trying to accomplish what Arthur just tried to accomplish, but, you know, came up short doing. Um, and then the other little unique twist is uh, Tyler Smythe uh, beat longtime training partner of Arthur, Joe Poria, for that title. So maybe a mm-hmm. little revenge. Uh, you know, Arthur's got a little bit extra on it for this fight. You know, revenge for his teammate and stopping somebody um, from doing what he tried to do and he couldn't accomplish. And as for Tyler, Tyler's just looking for the biggest and baddest test he can get. You know, and, and, and that's, you know, across the board for those Evolution guys up in Maine. They come down to the Cage Titans. And they're stoked to fight for us, and they want to uh, test themselves against the best New England. And and I respect the shit out of that from those guys. Diggy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's really not much to say. I mean, it's going to be an amazing night. We have these, like Mike was saying, we have Arthur who is going to be doing what he does best. Um, he's going to either stop the person from doing what he wanted to do, or surprises just like he does every night you know every time he goes in there we expect we don't really know what to expect from him because we know he's going to give it his all but what's really going to happen and that's what's been happening with all of the fights that we've been having at cage titans we have all these name fighters that we have a certain you know image of them and then when they walk into the cage and they close the doors it's like whoa you know like who is this person like because it's like during the pandemic they like evolved into a new level of a fighter that we Mm -hmm. haven't seen yet so every fight night at Cage Titans is literally a new fight because we don't really know what to expect from these fighters because before we would see fights and it was kind of like, oh, this is what's going to happen. We already knew exactly what was ha- was going to happen. Whereas now they've taken that extra step to fine tune every single thing that they might have messed up in, what they might have missed. So we see a new fighter each time they walk into the cage. And that's like the best thing of it. Like, Jojo Janetti, we've seen him transform into this new fighter as a person, as a fighter, as everything. And I mean, it's going to be an amazing night. Yeah, you know, you, you you bring on a great point. And, you know, you mentioned Joe, but I, I go back to the amateurs. Is that like what's great about the amateur ranks through cage tights is that, you know, these guys are still trying to find themselves. And we got on the topic talking about Arthur and, and Tyler, but like all these fighters are still trying to find who they are. And they're still trying to fine tune all of their skills. And after every fight, they're going back to the lab and working on shortcomings and things that they, they felt that they came up, you know, like weaknesses in their game and trying to round it out. You know, I'm not saying that doesn't happen in the pro ranks, you know, because it absolutely does. Um, Guys reinventing themselves, but let's be honest when you're in the pros, like you kind of know what you're getting from those fighters. You kind of know who they are. You know what their style is. You know, by that point in their career, they've kind of developed in who they're going to be. You know, Conor McGregor is a power puncher. Chuck Liddell in his pro days is a power puncher. 
But I bet if you could go back in time and see who they were early in their career, you'd see them progressing and growing. And that's what I love about Cage Steins. You know, you see guys from an O and O amateur. We're taught you mentioned the pros, but like look at Trevor Goody and, and, and Joe Gianetti. Mm-hmm. They were O and O amateurs. We got the, the the privilege of watching their skills progress and all the different facets of their game and the evolution of their skill set to now here they are as pros. Um, that's what's beautiful about Cage Steins, I I feel, is that you really get to grow up and see these guys grow up in front of your eyes. And, and then develop themselves. You know, you can see the changes. You can watch a fight and be like, oh, he, he didn't have that tool set when he was fighting last card. Oh, cool. It's nice to see him add that to the back. Uh, so that that's one of the great things I love about the amateur fighters and just the amateur program in general with Cage Titans. Um, so there you go. Yeah, and I'm I'm always happy when you have the women's fights on the card too. And um I know I got none. I got none this time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So that one ha- didn't happen and you know Ly- Lionel and um and, and Bruno. Bruno fell fell apart and man is it he's had some bad them two have had the bad luck uh bug with uh what's been going on with both of them. I understand yeah. personal and, and injury wise. Yeah, man, that's that just that fight that got away. I mean, this fight was scheduled for June and Bruno had to pull out. No, sorry. Lionel had to pull out with some uh, personal things going on with his family. Yes. And in July, Bruno had to pull out um, with, with something going on. And then here he is, you know, the week, two weeks before the fight and Bruno breaks his hand. I mean, he posted the x-ray. I mean, you can yeah, tell. Yeah, showed the x-ray. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's no joke. It's just. This is that cursed fight. I mean, it even put Bruno into the perspective. I think he posted like, you know, he's getting a little, both of these guys getting a little older. And it's like when you put so much time and effort into training camp, sacrifice, all that stuff, you know, you, when it, it's, it's so disheartening when, when, it, when it falls apart and, and I can feel his pain when he sits there and he's like, you know what? I'm thinking about just calling it quits. You know, like how much time can you take away from your job and your family and all that? Uh, into a fight camp and then boom in a matter of seconds the fight's off and all that sacrifice so it's like I, I feel his pain we'll see I think the competitor in him might come back but um, it's a tough hand injury you know it's it's kind of one of those curse fights it's like one at three fights in a row now this fight's got canceled so uh, we'll see what happens but I wish a speedy recovery for Bruno uh, we are working on Absolutely. some options for Lionel um, you know because for Lionel this is July and August this happened to him in and same thing, you know, his kids and the days off from work and all that stuff he sacrificed. Um, you know, he wants the opportunity to compete and his clock is ticking. I think he's 37, 38. Like he doesn't have a ton of time left. And and he has some, he's been really focused on trying to get back to the party. And, uh, you know, so we're going to try to keep him on the card. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, we got a week and a half, so they, there, there's not a lot of time. We're going to do our best and we'll, we'll see where it goes. And it's funny because then I just saw the parties fighting in Michigan. No, no, no. Yeah, he was. He was. He was fighting in Michigan. But the guy that, you know, he hit me up because we didn't have a car, fight for him on this card. We were targeting in October. And he got an opportunity to fight in September. Coincidentally, the day after I think he signed that fight, um, that kid that he was supposed, supposed to fight from Michigan got signed to Dana White's Contender Series. So, uh that guy's actually fighting in Dana White's contender series at the end of September. I think September 20th. So uh, that fight's off. I actually reached out to the party. I was like, yo, you want, I, I, I know you just beat him and he hasn't got a win since, which this fight with him and Bruno was going to be. They both wanted rematch. Mm-hmm. I said, the fight didn't happen. I, I don't know how much sense it makes for you, but would you want to come up and fight Lionel again? Um, but, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make a ton of sense for him. I, I knew it was a long shot, but I threw it up there. Maybe wouldn't that have been a good one, number two? <laughs> it definitely would have been a good fight, but it's definitely not the time for it. It's mm-hmm. it, they need something in between, you know, to to get it going. To you know, because if not, there's going to be speculation of if who wins, who does, and like we don't want that. We want to both see them, you know, fighting at the level that they need to be at. You know, get one, two more fights, and then let's see what happens. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, this card, like we, we mentioned earlier, we joked at the beginning. It's like we, we got 18 fights. I mean, you know, as bummed as we might be to, to not have that fight on the card. I mean, the Brandon Battles versus Joshua Marsh, 
fight just slides mm-hmm. into the co-main event, which is a stud fight. You know, Brennan Battles, we saw him make his return last event. Um, highly accoladed wrestler. He's fighting Joshua Marsh, who's a 10-fight veteran, 5-5. Five and five. And uh, Marsh is, is as tough as they come. He's seasoned. He's coming in off two wins and, and two wins in a row. He, he's also a wrestler himself, so I don't know how that's going to nullify the advantage that Battles has. Usually, Battles has a significant uh, advantage in the wrestling game. And Marsh kind of cancels that out. So we'll see how this fight goes. And and I think that's just another amazing fight that just slides into that co-main event slot behind uh, Giannetti and Goody. And, uh, you know, the show goes on. And we have those two amazing amateur title fights. We got the Cam Arnold versus Mike Taylor. That's going to be a slugfest. Um, it, it's, it's, it, it's such a heavy card. Um, it, it, it's got a little something for everybody. It really does. And the, the Leonardo and, uh, and Josh Hardy card looks like it's going to be a good one too. Yeah. Josh Hardy's man. He's, this kid's tough. He's up from Vermont and, you know, he just kind of had a great amateur career. Um, you know, and, and I think he's similar record one in three, one in four. Uh, right now, but he's he's a super tough kid. That just doesn't show the caliber fighter he is. He's just fought studs. I mean, like he he fought Connor Matthews, who was just on the contender series, and yes. uh, Leo, who sits at two and three, is, is a very similar situation. He just fought some stud of a fighters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so this is an opportunity for two guys to kind of square off. Um, that they're let we we've kind of seen their levels when they fight those upper echelon guys. Like Leo fought De- Dion Rubio came up short. Dion's an undefeated professional fighter. You know, Josh fought the undefeated Connor Matthews before he went on the contender series. So it's like they came up short against those guys. So now let's just see them against each other and, um, and you know, see where their levels and the best man wins and, and maybe catapults their career um, a little bit further on and, and, and towards the top. So we'll see what happens. That should be a fun one uh, for sure. And the same thing with the Mike Taylor versus Cam Arnold. Cam Arnold highlight reel knockout of the year in his pro debut was a stud amateur fighter. Um, I think five or six. And one. I guess Cam knocked him out of the. <laughs> I did not kick him out. No, it was Cam with his. Okay. So we're talking about Cam Arnold in the knockout, Mike. So. Yeah, man, like, I, yeah, this this fight is just like, you know, you see Cam Arnold make his pro debut, um, and, he, and he has that amazing knockout, and, you know, this kid's just a slugger. You know, he's going to stand in the middle of the cage and just bite down and start swinging for the fences, everything he throws. And Mike Taylor's very much the same. You know, we remember Mike Taylor, um, you know, coming up short in jo- uh, Jeff Joyce fight. He got submitted, but no one really wants to stand and trade with uh, Mike Taylor. Uh, he had an amazing... Uh, fight with Jacobo Opito many years ago, and was in, and he cracked. He he might have came on there. He came out with the L in that fight, but uh, I I think he won the war, so to speak. After the fight, you could tell the damage that he did to Jacobo. Um, it just shows me this kid's got dynamite in his hands too. And these guys, this just makes for a fun fight. Um, needless to say, neither's going to shoot a takedown, and, and the fans are going to be in for a good one. Yeah. But the thing is, like, people really don't know what to expect from Mike because his yeah. record does not reflect his skills at all. So somebody just joining in and watching this fight, they're like, oh, yeah, he's one and four, you know, but they don't understand. Yeah, you know, you look at Yeah, well, you look at it, you know, and again, we talked about it with Leo and, uh, you know, Josh Hardy. It's like these guys come out of the amateur ranks. Uh, Mike Taylor had a st- stellar amateur career. And then w- once they get to the pros, you know, they they start fighting you know you're fighting studs you're fighting the best of the best in all the amateur uh promotion you know all the promotions so it's like you were a champ in your promotion now when you go pro you're fighting champs from every other promotion and you, you know it's it, it's it you kind of you know see where you're at and you know when you're fighting stud after stud after stud you know y- y- you might come up with like a one in three record like i you know we mentioned but um, it's not a, um, a true reflection of the caliber of fighter these guys are. So uh, here's an opportunity for, you know, I love this fight simply from a matchup perspective and the skill set matchup. 
Um, I, I just think it, it, it's going to be an amazing fight. Mike Taylor is also pretty big for the weight. Cam Arnold's a little on the smaller size for the weight. That could factor could come into play. Um, I think shot for shot, Cam is like that one punch power knockout guy. Um, but is that nullified a little bit because he's fighting a bigger guy? Um, I don't know. We're, we're going to see. We're going to find out next Saturday. I can tell you that much. And you bring up a good point, like with records and stuff. And a boxer really gave me a good perspective on it, too. There's a casual fan who sees, you know, different numbers like 38 and 15. That doesn't mean they're a bad fighter. It's just, you know, it happens. They lose, they win. That's the thing. Whereas, yeah, man. You, know, you know, like to us who watch this all the time and we see it, we know who can throw, we know who can bang. And, you know, that needs to be recognized instead of like, you know, the casual line of it. Like you see somebody 0 and 1, you you think they like, they suck or something it's like no you you just haven't seen the full full fighter yeah i that's why i i very rarely talk about people's record i talk about their skill set i talk about their background i take them i talk about the why like why do you want to watch this fight and you know I, I very rarely focus on their record because you know unfortunately in the day and age where um you know other pro team sports people are caught up in records i don't think that a record tells the true story in mma um you, you know, uh, it, it, it's just it's just facts like, you know, the, a couple of years ago, you know, there's a team that's one in 16. I, f- I forget what it was, an NFL team. And it's like, but n- don't be confused. Like the quarterback of the one in 16 team, you might want to say sucks, but he's still going to smoke anybody like that. You know, then that, you know, and it's like you see a guy who's on one. It's like. Don't think you're an internet, you know, you're a tough guy watching from the stand. That guy is still a badass. Like, um, you know, I talk about Jay Ellis, like Jay Ellis has a lot of losses, but like to the everyday untrained person, Jay Ellis kicks your ass, you know, like, you know, so he might, he's, he's fighting the best of the best and that puts him a tier below, but that doesn't mean that he's, he's, they're not good. And, And I find it with other, with other sports, like, you know, the bench player in the NBA, if he showed up at your local playground, he's running the playground. Like, and, you know, so that's a, a thing that I think gets lost in, in MMA sometimes. You know, they, they look at a guy's record and it's like, oh, yeah, I could beat that guy because he has a bad record. It's like, oh, I don't think so. Uh, so I digress a little bit. It's not that you're digressing. It's just like, like you said, Jay Ellis has fought for a long time. And obviously he hasn't stepped down from any challenge he's ever had because yeah. of all the, all the record he's had. Yeah. So it's, 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 uh, it's interesting in the sport of MMA. And that's why I try not to focus so much on records. I, I, I focus on trying to tell the story, why you care, why you should care about this fight, why you would want to see this fight. Cause MMA is, is, is so uh, diverse skill set that comes into play so many different ways to winning it's just like you know look at the trevor goody and the gianetti fight now that might people would be like oh they break it down it's like well you got a guy six seven that's fighting okay that's something that like you have to factor in people like oh well is he a good striker is he a good grappler is he a good wrestler it's like he's six seven that's an attribute in a fight that that, Mm -hmm. that's going to come into play um you know, you don't. You might not see that on a stat line if you're if you're thinking fighting games where the power bar says like stamina and striking ability and grappling and wrestling. It's like, but that that that's a big attribute uh, that's going to come into play. There's just so many features. Like uh, Dean Thomas was doing a presentation at the ABC convention and he was talking about like boxing and comparing it to MMA and judging and all that. And he's like, in boxing, you can throw ones, or, you know, one left hand and you can throw a right hand. It's pretty straightforward. MMA, you can throw that left hand, that right hand, elbow, knees, kicks. There's grappling. There's uh, wall work. There is clinch game. There is takedowns. There are submissions. There are, you know, there's chokes. There's joint manipulation locks. Like, there's just so many uh, facets of the game. So, I don't really remember how we got on that topic, but that that that's something that comes to mind. 
Um, what do you think about the fight game, though? Yeah, I mean, another thing that, you know, you say you don't look at the record. I mean, you do look at the record, but it's not the the final decision maker thingy. But you also look at who they're fighting. Yes. Because, like you said, you know, Jay Ellis fights the top guys. So that's what people have to look at. So if you if the, he's fighting, you know, the lowest people on the rank and he's still losing, then that, that might be something that you consider like, well, maybe not. Maybe we should just wait until... But if the person is fighting the top people, regardless of the outcome of the fight, that's something that people need to look at because they're stepping into the cage, they're stepping into the ring, and they're showing their skill set with these top people. Like, um, you know, they people who fought Randy Costa, people who fought, you know, fought, you know, Jay Perrin, you know, um, Peter Barrett, Joe Janetti, you know, all of these people who are high level who have made it to the UFC. You know, so that's what people need to look at. It's not that they're losing. They're not losing to me because I can't fight for anything. You know, it's who who are they up against. So it's something that people really need to consider. And, you know, everybody loves the matches you have, especially at Cage Titans. You bring people out from other states. When we can't get a match here, you don't stop. You do your best to find a good matchup. Yeah, and you know, you know, you look at guys why why like Leo and Josh Hardy is a fun fight. It's like mm-hmm. they've already fought the top 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 guys, and um, you know, local scene they they fought some super tough fights. So it's like, all right, cool. We know they're not there yet, but do we just discard those guys? No, like let's put them against each other and and, and try to help bring their career along. And um, that that that's what I'm looking at, mm-hmm. especially with that fight in particular. You look at a guy like you know uh, Mike Taylor as well. Like you know his his career is he's he's fought some tough guys, but it's like all right, well let's see how you know he lost second round submission to Jeff Joy, but here he is now, so we know Jeff Joy's a little above him, fair enough, but now he's fighting the guy who um, Jeff Joy beat. So now we can still have another measuring stick of all right, he didn't beat Jeff Joy, but like let's see how he does against a guy that Jeff Joy beat, like. Now we can kind of gauge where he really is and see his skill set and then learn from it and then match accordingly for his next his next fight or both those guys uh, for their next fight. So uh, there's a lot to go in the matchmaking. There's a lot to go in the sport. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things to consider. I, I deal with the commission a lot and they're like, well, why, Mike? Why do you do this? Or what's this? And I'm like, I can't teach you in a, a three minute conversation what we've um learned in this sport over the last you know personally over the last 15 years like there's just so many things that go into what we do um it's hard to kind of like sum it up for you and just give you like the cliff notes and so uh you know it's an intricate sport it's why i love it i never stop learning i never stop thinking about it um you, you know we talk about the commission i sent them an email at three in the morning last week and I will, you know, I woke up at seven thirty to a text like, "You're an absolute animal." I'm like, "This might." Uh, I'm a unique person. There's no, there's nothing I do that I'm not thinking about MMA, and uh, and I love the sport. I want to see it progress. I want to see all these fighters do. I don't want to see that guy lose. It's like, ah, I don't want to see that guy lose. I got Trevor Goody and Giannetti in this fight. I mean, I've watched both these guys grow up uh, Mm -hmm. from Mm -hmm. kids to high main event status fighters right in front of my eyes. Like Jojo's been fighting for us since he was 18 and Trevor for the last eight or nine years. I don't know exactly. I think he's 30, 31. So, you know, his, his pretty much his entire adult like life. He's been fighting with us. I've seen him grow up like, you got your two kids fighting. You don't want to see either one of them lose. But, uh, you know, the beauty of this is when the door closes, I can't control any of that. And they know what they signed up for. Um, you know, and, and I, I have only once in my career tried to stop a decision to get red. That was the Adam Russell and Andy Kurzankowski mm-hmm. fight. And, you know, we did that fight between two of our employees for, a, a, you know, a bunch of different reasons. Um, you know, to honor Harry Jones, our, uh, our ring announcer who passed away. And uh, that fight was so much more. And even then, when they were about to read the winner, I grabbed the scorecard. I'm like, you know what? This fight's more than 
who won this fight. This was about honoring our friend Harry. And both of them looked at me and was like, you better read that fucking scorecard. And I'm like, <laughs> we didn't go through this for nothing. <laughs> and I was like, dude, it's not about that. Like we did what, you know, you guys set out what, you, you know, you did what you set out to do. You honored Harry, you know, like whoever won or lost this fight means nothing about in, in terms of the big picture. But even in like the moment that you would think no one would care, both of those guys looked at me and it was like, read that fucking card. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and, and I started to swear, but it was just, that, that's just the severity of that moment. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the only time it's, it's really come up a little bit. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, Andy came in uh, in the interview room, I think, that night. Yeah. Or, no, that was, yeah, that was 50, right? That was, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's time 50 daytime, yep. Yes. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. <laughs> I know. That, that was an unbelievable card. That was a really good card. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, as for this card, I mean, there's a lot of guys that, you, you know, the amateurs, like Jake Caskey's back. I talked yeah. about Julian Connerton. Uh, Dan Walsh, only Dan's, is back. Another fight I'm excited for, Wolfgang um, from, I can't even pronounce his last name, but when you have a name, your first name's Wolfgang. Yeah. Do I really need to say anything else? Like, that's like Cher. No. Madonna, like you're one name, man. And that's his real name too. And like at yeah. first I thought like, ah, oh, this is just his Facebook, but no, Wolfgang. Uh he's fighting Andrew Jacobs, two high level amateurs. Um, that's gonna be a banger of a fight. Um you know, there's just I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm also excited about this team out of Connecticut, Cage JSA. Um, they're a brand new school. I, I don't I'm sorry. They're not a brand new school. They're a brand new school to Cage Titans. Mm -hmm. Um, they're bringing four fighters up and they're coming heavy and hard into the cage titan scene and uh, it's their first appearance and they're bringing four guys up so I, I couldn't be more excited about that um you know high level amateur fights jake caskey taking on mike antidormi uh we've seen jake caskey explode on the scene um his, his amazing fight of the year with dan walsh then uh he came back and he got his first win in his last performance um he's taking on mike antidormi who's undefeated as an amateur um he's he basically he wanted anybody for the 35 title um and he said i'm coming looking for you um i wasn't able to secure him a fight at 35 he walks at 45 he's like dude i'll just fight 45 i don't care give me anybody i don't decline fights i just show up and i love that enthusiasm about him and uh you know he's got his hands full in jay caskey but um I, I think they both got their hands full this is going to be a great fight and, and, and as an amateur fight it, it should be a fun one um Avery Andrews is back in the Muay Thai world, um, two and one for us, uh, the US MMA. Um, G and G's back from out in Springfield. Donovan Lozado's coming back. Um, you know, he was, and then, um, James Thomas is making his Muay Thai debut, uh, against Will Doolin, who's also making his Muay Thai debut. Um, yeah, man, there's just, there's just a lot of good fights on this card. And, and it's, it's, it's really top to bottom. Um, it has a little something for everybody. You know, we got debuting Muay Thai guys against each other. Then we got experienced Muay Thai guys versus each other. Uh, we got debuting amateurs versus each other. Then we got experienced amateurs versus each other. We got amateur title fights. We got pros in their first couple fights with like the Cam Arnolds and, and the Mike Taylor and, you know, early in their career, like Leo Ladera and those guys. Then we have, you know, next level potential type fighters in Trevor Goody, Joe Giannetti, Brandon Battles, Marsh. Um, this fight, this fight's got it all. Um, and you should be excited if you're a Cage Titans fan because uh, this is what Cage Titans is all about. Um, bringing a plethora of experience. You got something for everybody. You're going to see it all. And um, yeah, that's it, man. Next Saturday, it's going to be, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good one. For Muay Thai fights, you said there weren't any female fights. Does the female car, um, fight get canceled? Yeah, we had the female Muay Thai fight, and unfortunately, um, one of Sienna Mitten, uh, I didn't want to disclose it, but you know, she 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 had to pull out, um, you know, and we're going to reschedule that for October, or hopefully reschedule for our next show. That was a fun one, 150 mm -hmm. pound fight. fight. Um, she was fighting Lindsay Kelly up out of Evolution. Um, I think the other the other female fight. Uh, Christina Cassikis, the meat grinder. She was supposed to be fighting Carolyn Biscup. Um, Carol, Carolyn 
uh, fell through her barn roof and uh, busted, oh. jacked up her elbow. She can't move her elbow. She might have to get surgery. Um, she sent me pitches. It's crazy. I mean, I forget what state she lives in, but I mean, she fell through her barn roof and <laughs> jacked up her elbow, sent me the doctor's, you know, notes and all that stuff. And um, she's hoping to avoid surgery, but it might look like it. So if we can get that rescheduled for October, we will. If not, we're going to try to find something else for KK. Um, sometimes you're just under the gun, you find mm-hmm. out two weeks notice and, you know, women fights, it's the pool is not that deep. So, you know, there's not a lot of options and, and, and time wasn't on our side to kind of save those two fights. Yeah. Carolyn's from Michigan. Michigan. There you go. Mm-hmm. Good, good luck. <laughs> Does, so I don't know if I asked you, Mike, is Jadafa fighting or is he not fighting? Should offers fighting Dan Burke for the uh, amateur title 185. Um, you know, they were supposed to, he was supposed to fight Colin Robinson after Colin won his Muay Thai fight uh, and won the Muay Thai title. He called out should offer. Uh, that was a fight that was supposed to happen before. Uh, Colin pulled out once, then should offer pulled out, and then should offer wasn't available. So we ended up making the fight for the Muay Thai title. Um, when Colin called out should offer, his goal was for the fall. He didn't want to fight uh, again before the uh you know during the summer so i was kind of like left scrambling like well jid offer's been on the shelf he wants to fight um two weeks ago at nef this guy dan burke out of nostos just blasted his opponent and just knocked him out and his second fight in a row for nef he knocked him second opponent second knockout first round knockout he's looked like a stud he trains out but nostos with devin powell and those guys um you know you you might ring a bell with like Brody McDougal out of that mm-hmm. school, Josh Smith, who's fighting on this card. Shit. I forgot the Josh Smith fight, Josh Smith. Um, that's going to be a great fight, but um, y- you know, uh, versus Shane Delahaye. Um, but Dan Burke, I-, I reached out. I was already talking to Devin and Carolyn and um, I was like, Hey, listen, you don't happen to have any fivers kind of like in the back of my mind. I knew they had that guy and I knew he just won. So I wanted to see what they would say. And they were just like, our guy just won in the first round. And I was like, Oh, he did, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know I kind of knew what I was doing. And then, you know, listen, it wasn't, I, I just don't want to, I, I hate just like hitting him up and go, I just saw somebody won. You want to have him fight for us. So like, mm-hmm. you know, I just, I, I talk to those guys regularly. So I just kind of was like, Hey, I kind of need an 85 or if you had somebody and they're like, Hey, Dan's came out relatively clean out of that fight. He won in like a minute or something. Uh, we'll get back to you. And then two days later, I think the screenshot was let's fucking go from Dan (laughs) to Devin. And I love Devin and Carolyn. They always share the text messages. Like they'll screenshot it and be like, here's your answer. And I'm like, I love that energy. And uh, that whole school up there, they're going to be a real problem on the scene about a new Hampshire. Um, You know, Brody McDougal, Josh Smith, um, you know, they, they have a lot of guys that have been coming down here to cage science and, and also fighting up North and new, uh, new Hampshire and Maine, um, just, just blasting guys and, and putting on amazing performances. So, um, I'm excited and, uh, Jid offer gets a fight and, and I've told both guys, I said, Colin Robinson's waiting there for October. So the winner is going to get Colin. You already know, I don't want to get too ahead of you guys, but you know, the agreement is we fight on this card and, you know, Colin's been sitting there waiting. So uh, the winner is going to fight Colin as well. Uh, so their first defense is already set. Uh, well, first defense, if Dan win, David wins, um, and it's a second defense if, if Jid Offer wins. I keep calling him Dan Burke because I used to have a guy that fought for me, Dan Burke, out of New Hampshire, but it's David Burke. So I guess my final question to you, Mike, is um... – you know, are we going to have 43 fights now or, you know, we're sticking at 42? I think we're going to stick at 42. I got one more that's in the works. Um, oh. Oh. I got one more in the works, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see. And, and listen, we got a week and a half to go. I mean, shit happens daily. Like, I didn't expect to wake up yesterday and, and, and uh, you know, Bruno pulled out. And, you know, I, um, I have another fighter that I haven't informed his opponent yet, but I, I woke up this morning to another guy pulling out. So, um, you know, now we're at crunch time. So those injuries that you kind of hoped 
would heal up before fight week. You're kind of finding out if they're, they are or they're not. And this is the week where I kind of like everybody has to send in their medicals and everything. So this is kind of the, this is the scary week. So yeah, we might be at 18, 19 today, but you know, we, 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 uh, we might flex a little bit. We'll see what happens. You could have 20, 23. No, 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 no. I'd say I'd, we will not go higher than 18, 19, you know, but you, you never know. Like I've had fight cards like back in the day, oh, I remember. I'd book 20 fights and on fight week. I'd have 12 and drop eight. So then it's just like, all right, well, I got to fight. I got to book 18 and I got to book 18, 20, 22 fights. If I'm booking 20 and falling to 12, let's book 22 and fall to 14. And then bam, no fights pull off and I'm stuck at 22, which is not my ideal number. You know, if you book 12 fights, you're going to probably fall to eight by the time fight week rolls around, you know, seven, eight, six, seven, eight. So it's like, you kind of got to bulk up. And then sometimes people just fall off. But then in a certain instance, like this show, you know, we're at 2021, you know, we did lose one or two, but we're still at 19. Um, Maybe everybody gets to the cage healthy next week and we're at 19, you know, maybe one or two fights drop off and we fall to about a more, more manageable number. I'll call it about 16. Uh, time will tell. Time will tell. Yes. La- last card was very long. That was a good, it was a good card. And in uh, a lot of craziness happening during that time. Yeah. Last card we had, you know, some technical difficulties, which, which delayed the show by an hour. Um, you know, that was, that was kind of a bummer, but we, I think we got that all worked out. Um, we had the new lighting rig last show, the new lighting rigs back. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I own oh, it. So cool. of course it's, I own it. The course it's back. <laughs> uh, anybody who's watching this, I will need hands next Friday after the weigh-ins. If you want to come help me set it up, um, it's a pain in the ass to set up, but last show was our first time setting it. I think we got a little bit better idea this time. Um, but yeah, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, uh, we're ready to go. Cage signs 55. Um, and, um, we're going to have something for everybody and, and, and I'm excited to see the fans again. Um, it's funny. We were doing so many shows close. Like we had, you know, June and July and we got to see everybody in back to back months within a month's frame. I feel like I haven't seen everybody for so long because we were July 2nd and here we are almost two months later, August 27th, seeing everybody. So it's going to be nice to see everybody, see everybody's faces and, and kind of get the family back together. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Same. Iggy, anything else you want to say? No, looking forward to the fights. Looking forward to the festivities that this fight night is going to come with, you know? But we're ready for anything and everything that's that's going to happen. Because seriously, with Cage Titans, anything and everything that you can possibly think of has happened. So we are prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're prepared and you never all. know. What everybody over gives me a hard time about, you never know what I just might spout off and just like on the spur of the moment, just be like, I'm doing this. And it's just kind of how, you know, kind of how I roll it. If I'm feeling it in the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm very into that. And so you never know, you might see something cool. You, you know, might something simple you never saw before. Uh, we might try to pull something out. I think we are going to bring back the press conference. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to be doing that on Thursday. I'm pretty sure. I'm just going to confirm with Trevor. I know Joshua Marsh is going to be in town. Uh, we're flying him in early, so hopefully Battles, Marsh, um, Arthur will already be in town, so hopefully we can get Tyler Smike to drive down from Maine. Um, hopefully we can get Jadoffer. If Trevor's coming, he can bring Jadoffer, their teammates, um, and, and get those two title fights in the Maine and co-main event there for a presser on Thursday. Um, so we're hoping to bring that back. It was Everybody loved it, and and it was super fun to do, and it was it was super fun to, like, lead up and, and kind of get these fans to see a little bit before the fights. So uh, I, I definitely want to bring that back. We didn't do it in June. Um, Cause I think it was Don Shanis versus a guy who didn't speak English uh, and Bryce Pichaud. So it was like, uh, this oh, is going right. to be, yeah. So I was like, I don't know how we're going to pull a press conference off. And we didn't really have a translators. We were not prepared for that. So we didn't yeah. do it. Um, and then July was, <laughs> yeah, July 4th was the 4th of July weekend. So um, you know, that was like, ah, do we really want to add something to our plate? But, uh, I think we're going to bring it back next week. Once I can confirm the guys, um, I have a meeting with Memorial Hall tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, well, uh, that's it, man. I hear your alarm going um, off. That must mean we're out of time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Not that I don't love you, but, 
Um, I want to thank Iggy, always there in my corner all the time, and Mike Paul Veer, a.k.a. the Cage Titans boss, but treats me like one of his own, so I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, Don't call me so, boss. I hate that. Is Andy, has Andy got to you? Because Andy's <laughs> Andy calls me boss, and he, he like – started this thing and he knows i hate it so like he purposely tells people to call me it and he purposely goes around and says it to me in front of people so they catch on i hate it i'm just like you i'm just an mma fan that's doing what we love and and watching the sport i'm 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 no different than anybody else i hate it so don't 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 let that become a thing don't back up andy don't back up andy (laughs) all right boss we won't say it again oh jesus christ look what that's Iggy, look what the title of the show is going to be called. The <laughs> boss. The boss man. <laughs> yeah, great. It's it's so um, funny. He it comes back from uh he he gave me the uh, origin of it. It was like Anderson Silva talking to uh Dana White and and Andy does it like in an accent and it it is it's, it's, it's so funny. It's it just it, I, obviously, it it, it it cracks me up a little bit, but it is kind of funny. He does oh, it in an Anderson Silver voice, which makes it even funnier. Oh, I got it. Well, he's a comedian. He is. He is. But uh, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate everything you guys do. I got to go in and, and, and give my kids bats and do the dad stuff before I get on the computer for the rest of the night, uh, getting ready for next Saturday. So uh, thank you guys for your time, and uh, we will chat soon. Thank yes, you. August 27th, people. Get your tickets. All right. All right thanks, guys. Thanks for watching Maddie C's Sports for you and me. Make sure to follow Maddie Cameron on Twitter at MattCameron23 or follow him on Instagram at MattyC23 or subscribe to his YouTube channel, Maddie C's Sports for you and me. Once again, thanks for watching.